Welcome to Be the Scandal, the sacred rebellion of being your authentic self. I'm your host, Danny Hickman. I want to start off this episode with a simple question. Do you have the courage to be disliked? Notice how that question lands. And this question is really the foundation for this episode. When I think about this question, nowadays, I feel like I could answer it to be yes. Although certain people, if they disliked me, it would be a little bit harder than other people. But for the longest time, I lived my life in an energy that I had to be liked by everyone. Which now when I think back, that is a pretty crazy goal. Because I don't even like everyone. How in the world could I be a version of me that is pleasing to every person that I interacted with? But although it might be an impossible goal, a lot of us carry around this idea that we need to be liked by everyone. And it's really interesting when we unpack that. And of course, it's very individualized for each person. But I would invite you to ask yourself this next question of what would it mean if someone didn't like you? That would mean that I am blank. And just allow yourself to fill in the blank there with whatever's coming up. For me, if I think about it just really quickly, if I'm not liked by someone, that means I'm a bad person and I want to be a good person. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move through the world in efforts to be the most pleasing version of me to those people I'm interacting with. But where that gets a little muddy is that everyone has a different idea of what version of me is most pleasing. Now, there might be some similarities across the board. Yes, I'll give you that. But when you think about it, I interact with so many different people, especially here online and here in the podcast world, on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. And there is absolutely no way that everyone is going to like me, that I'm going to feel expansive for everyone. Most likely, I'm going to really trigger some people. And what my invitation for you is, is to think about like how much are you self-abandoning in efforts to get everyone to like you? And then quickly ask yourself, is that possible? Is it actually possible for everyone to like you? And if your answer is a yes, that's something maybe you need to unpack on your own because I really do feel like the overwhelming answer is no. There is no way for every single person to like you because at the end of the day, at some point, you're going to be representing someone's shadow to them and they aren't going to like you. It's going to trigger them and they're going to want you to stop being who you are. So just the way that our psyche works, there is no way that everyone is going to be pleased by you. And notice how that lands. I know I'm being a heavy hitter here at the beginning of this episode, but just notice how that lands. If parts of you are like, oh my gosh, I can't handle that, or that feels really heavy or big, or maybe it kind of feels freeing to you that, oh, this thing I've been trying to uphold, getting everyone to like me is actually an impossible task. Maybe I can free myself a little bit of this expectation that can never be met. Just notice in this moment how this is landing in your body. When I look back on my life, I grew up as a preacher's daughter, so I really had high expectations of myself, and I really feel like my community and my family had high expectations of me too. What I felt like I was doing was upholding my reputation and also my dad's at the same time. And for me, I really had this idea that if I got everyone to like me, then people would like my dad and then we would be okay. And that was a crazy idea. Because what I did was I changed and I shifted and I was such a chameleon in these different settings with different people that I didn't even know who I was at the end of the day. I was so disconnected from who I was because I was trying to be the most pleasing version of me out there. I was feeling disconnected from myself. I was feeling a lack of self-worth. I had no idea who I was. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had no sense of purpose and direction. I was simply, it felt like a puppet that would put on different masks and put on these different shows for people in order to please them and get them to accept me. Because at the end of the day, I was doing that because I didn't know how to sit with the emotional pain of being rejected. I didn't know how to sit in the emotional pain of being disliked. So I would work really hard to avoid that emotional pain. And I'm wondering if that lands for you. 
if when you think about it, there are parts of you that have no idea how to cope with being disliked. That whenever the idea comes up of maybe you doing something that you really desire to do or moving through the world that is in integrity, that is actually in alignment with who you are, parts of you are like, no way, we can't do that because it might make so-and-so upset or they might not like me or they might not want to be my friend anymore or they might not want to be my partner or my mom won't talk to me anymore. Just notice if you're making decisions from that energy. Because so quickly we say no and we stop our expression of authenticity without even being curious into, wait a second, why is a part of me not wanting to do this? Why does a part of me think we cannot cope with the rejection or being disliked? And why am I not even exploring the idea that potentially I can cope with whatever comes my way? I can cope with rejection. I can cope with abandonment. I can cope with the narratives and support myself in those narratives that I've written about what it means if someone dislikes me. We don't take time to just pump the brakes and ask ourselves that question. So with this episode, I really want to bring the invitation for you to start getting curious into the idea that you have the ability to access the courage within to move forward more authentically and be disliked. You can still be okay. You could even still be a good person even when people don't like you. I think a place to start here is looking at those narratives that you've written and the meaning that you've attached to being disliked. If you've listened to my podcast before, you know I'm probably going to ask a version of this question, but I invite you to take a moment and ask yourself, what does it say about you as a person if someone else doesn't like you? So for me, you know, it is, I'm a bad person. I'm unlikable. I'm unlovable. I'm unworthy. I've created a lot of attachment and meaning to what it says about me if someone else dislikes me. So I invite you to be curious in that. And once you get that information of what it means to you, I invite you to simply observe it. We're not attaching to it. And then we want to be curious into this particular part that is holding so tightly to this narrative because they need support from you. Because they're still operating in an old system that did keep them safe and connected and the energy of, I have to belong because if I don't, I won't survive. We are wired that way. We need to belong to our family. We need to belong to our community because it is in the energy of survival. When we're little, if we don't belong to our family and our community, we can't feed ourselves. We can't clothe ourselves. We can't keep ourselves safe. We need our community to take care of us. But now as we're adults, We don't necessarily need that. We don't need the acceptance of our mom to stay safe. We don't need that. And I know that I'm being a heavy hitter with that example, but I had a conversation with someone recently and we were talking about this. You know, we were talking about, gosh, what if my mom doesn't accept who I am? She's going to have a big reaction to it. And I said a version of that sounds like more about your mom's issues and your mom's reactions and inability to regulate her emotions, then it says about you as a person. But what we do is we take other people's reactions to us and we internalize them. We then write a narrative of what it says about us because we live in a codependent society, a society where we're enmeshed where we don't know where we start and end, and we don't know where those people we're interacting with and where relationships start and end. And when we don't have those clear boundaries, we get so wrapped up in wanting to be accepted and wanting to be loved, even if that love is conditional. So what I feel like is true is we're walking around with this fear of being our most authentic selves because we're afraid that people won't like us or people won't want to be in relationship with us anymore or they'll reject us. And you know what? That might be true. It might be true. We have to be present in that particular truth. That even if it's a younger part of you that is really scared and is trying to drive your bus and say, no, 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 we can't be who we are because I'm afraid that my mom won't like me anymore. That might be true because you being who you are might really trigger mom and she might be unable to regulate and process that and meet you in the energy of unconditional love. She might not have that ability. But again, that says more about the inauthenticity that your relationship is built upon 
and the conditional love that your relationship is built upon. And maybe we need to look at that. Maybe we need to look at that first of like, what is my relationship actually built upon? What am I trying to uphold and maintain when in reality, it's not actually created on authenticity. The people that we're in relationship with might like the inauthentic version of ourselves and not actually the true version of ourselves. I invite you to notice how that lands. I'm being a pretty heavy hitter in this episode because I really want to shake it up a bit. I want to open up the door to curiosity into why aren't you actually moving through the world authentically? What is holding you back? And so often it is a younger part of us that feels like they cannot cope with the abandonment or rejection or the energy of not being liked by those people they're in relationship with. And maybe that younger version of you can't because they don't have the skills to be able to cope with that. But here's what I know. Adult you, the adult version of you, knows how to cope with emotional pain. And if the adult version of you struggles with that, you have the ability and awareness to be able to seek out that information. There's so much information out there. There's information in my podcast about how to regulate your emotions. And what I invite you to do is in those moments where you're wanting to move through the world authentically, you're wanting to show people who you truly are, and it's quickly shut down, I want you to get curious. I want you to imagine you're talking to that part and say, ooh, you're feeling really scared about being authentic. Why are you so scared? How are you feeling right now? What do you want to say? And how can I support you in feeling safe as we start to move through the world more authentically? And seeing what this part says. Because if we're not getting curious into like, what do I actually need in this moment? We know that there's some discord within our system because parts of us do want to move through the world authentically. And other parts are like, no, no, this isn't safe. And so in order to support all of our parts, we want to be curious and Talk to those parts that are feeling really fearful because it can feel really traumatic for ourselves to just say, oh, well, shut up, get in the back seat. I'm driving and we're going to go be who we are. That is so traumatic. And there's probably going to be a lot of self-sabotage that happens if we do that. So what we want to do instead is to really attune to ourselves so that the parts of us feel seen, heard, and valued and supported as we choose to move through the world authentically. And I want to say this too, this is probably not the only time this is going to come up, but it's popping up right now, is that so many times our younger selves are really trying to uphold the versions of ourselves that is most pleasing to our parents, to those people in our family system. I felt for the longest time, oh my gosh, I can't be who I actually am. It's going to upset my mom. It's going to upset my dad. They won't like me. They'll be so disappointed in me. I didn't know how to cope. With that disappointment, I didn't know how to cope with being the source of distress for my family, for my parents. And so we want to support our parts in that. I had a part that was like, I just wish my family would unconditionally accept me. There's two things I want to say to that. One part of my story was I didn't give my family the opportunity to unconditionally accept me. And the moment that I did, my family showed up. My mom showed up. Because after my dad has died, I have been really unfolding and saying, wait, okay, I'm not going to waste time not being who I am. That was a real catalyst for me to just expand beyond the way I have been living. And I have continually showed up to my mom authentically since my dad has died. And she has continually showed up for me unconditionally. And it's been really interesting to watch that and to give her the opportunity to know the real me has actually deepened our relationship and invited my mom to grow too. Because I I feel whenever we are being who we are, of course, it is a growth opportunity for us, but also those people we're in relationship with. Sometimes we take away the growth from ourselves and those people that we're interacting with when actually they can meet us in that space. So I want to name that. And I also want to name that if you are an adult, It is no longer your parents' job to show up and take care of you, to be the attuned caregiver. Yes, I want that for you. I want you to feel supported in your relationships unconditionally. I want that. 
But in those moments where the humans in our lives cannot do that, I want you to remind yourself that because you're an adult now, it is your job to take care of your younger parts. It is your job. You are the adult in the room. It's your job to reparent yourself, attune to yourself, and make sure that you feel seen, heard, and held in whatever is coming up for you. That gives you space to move through the world authentically and support yourself in whatever comes up with that, whatever comes up emotionally, and also gives those people in our lives space to be who they are so that we're disconnecting from that codependency. It is not their job to show up in a certain way anymore. It's not their job to parent you anymore. And with that comes a lot of liberation and a lot of grief. Because we might have to be present in the fact that, oh, this person cannot meet me as my authentic self. And it feels really sad to mourn the loss of the way I thought this relationship could go or the illusion of how I thought this relationship was. There's so much emotional pain in that. And we have to learn how do I sit with that and make a conscious choice, a conscious decision in knowing this information, how do I want to move forward? And how do I support myself in moving forward more authentically? Because you can access the courage and the resiliency that you have within you because you are human. You can access that courage to move forward authentically regardless of other people's reactions to you. You can support yourself in that. You can do hard things. We just maybe need to remind ourselves of that. We just maybe need to hone in on our skills to support ourselves in that emotional processing and regulation of our big emotions. Yes, you might need to do that, but I'm inviting you to not self-abandon because you don't know how to sit in the emotional discomfort of not being liked. Because if we continually self-abandon, it's going to come to a head at some point. Might be next week, might be a year from now, might be 10 years from now when you reflect on your life and realize, wait a second, I haven't been living the life that lights me up. I've been living a life that has been curated by other people and moving through the world in the least distressing version of me. And this feels like crap. This doesn't feel good because at some point there's maybe going to be a pile of resentment. So that's not going to enhance your relationship with those people. There's going to be a lot of emotional distress, spiritual distress, physical distress. Our bodies are going to tell us this is no longer working. So at some point, you are going to be met with this. You're going to be met with the choice of, are you going to continue to self-abandon? Or are you going to choose authenticity and learn how to cope with being disliked? Because that will happen. The same as you don't like everybody that you meet or you interact with, even on a regular basis, people aren't going to like you. And it doesn't need to mean you're a bad person or you're unlovable or you're unworthy. It might just mean that they don't like you, period. And we don't need to use that as an invitation to internalize it and to make it a story about us. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Be The Scandal. If you like what you heard, don't forget to click subscribe so that you can join in on the sacred rebellion of being your most authentic self.